Welcome back to Buford Pusser, The Other Story. It's Saturday morning, so that means it's time for Saturday Shorts. Now, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to listen to an audio recording I made several years ago, probably 14, 15 years ago, uh, with Hobart Bingham. Now, Hobart was the brother and chief deputy for Sheriff Grady Bingham of Alcorn County. Now, we'll warn you that what you're going to hear may not sound politically correct all the time because uh, like so many people, Hobart grew up in a different time, a different era. Uh, things were a little different back then. So I hope that nobody's offended by anything that you might hear. But it's interesting to hear people from that time talk about Buford and the things that happened back in those days. Now, a lot of these things that he says cannot be verified. I haven't been able to track a lot of them down to determine if they're true or not true, or uh, I do know some of it is hearsay. So just understand that when you start watching it and just try to enjoy yourself. Hello? Hobart? Hey, my name is Mike Elam. I'm doing some research on the old state line days. And I understand that uh, you had a little experience with that back several years ago. Oh, yeah. For sure. I don't know all that much. I was, just, I was just wondering if you can tell me about uh, anything that you can remember from from uh, about the Hathcocks or uh, W.O. Louise. I'll, I'll well, you uh, I mean, all this place across from the state line up there around the end, you know. Yeah, the uh, Plantation Club. Yeah. And, uh, Louise and, uh, Jack on the state line. Uh, they're at the uh, Shamrock. Yeah. Yeah. Last and on the left, right there at the state line on 45. Yeah, I was down there last year, and uh, there's not much left standing down there except the old uh, White Iris building. Not anything there or a state line was. Yep. Explain no. Did, did, did you have occasion to meet uh, Louise? Yes, I've been here a lot of times. Oh, what can you tell me about, about her? Bedford Buster. Yep. He killed her, and... Uh, the next day, my neighbor down here runs a gun shop. Uh, he drove a truck a lot. And uh, he said his daddy knew Buford's daddy real good. They lived in Tennessee at that time. Don uh, Casey, he runs a gun shop out here just below my house, a little piece. Okay. And, and he said his daddy went up there to jail the next day after the killing. And he said... Uh, but come on, I said, I won't show you something. And he carried him down to the basement. And he said, well, it ain't here now. He said, Buford come in last night and said he had a suitcase that was full of money he had to stand on in the basement. Huh. And he got it stayed alive. Well, I'll tell you the reason I, I ask. Uh, I got real interested in all of this, and, uh, you know, I started checking into uh, a lot of things. I used to be in law enforcement over here in Benton yeah. County, and uh, yeah. so, of course, all that kind of interested me, and, uh, yeah. of course, I got, uh, one of the things I got a hold of was a copy of Louis uh, Hathcock's autopsy report, Yeah. and uh, I, have you ever seen that? No. Well, the part that bothers me a lot when I look at it is that, uh, you know, of course, it shows that she was shot three times. Yeah. Uh, she was shot in the shoulder, and then she was shot under the uh, left shoulder blade. Both of those bullets entered from her back. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, of course, she was shot one time in the head. Yeah. And... Um, that one apparently was while she was laying on the floor, which, you know, really kind of catches your attention. Uh, 
uh, I got interested in the Vogels. You know, they were supposed to be going, Buford was going down there to investigate a robbery of the Vogels. And one thing that caught my eye was uh, where uh, Will Terry Abernathy, who was the district attorney general down there, said that Buford went to the line with two uh, uh, warrants for, for alcohol, which, of course, you would suspect. The right. other one was for the robbery of the Vogels. But the Vogels yeah. never even made it to Selmer, and I'm wondering how he got a warrant for robbery before he ever got down there. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know. That would have been a real trick. That's right. Because they actually built the thing on the state line. I mean, half of it was in Tennessee and half of it was in Mississippi. Yeah. My, and my brother was, was elected sheriff in 68. Yeah. Pretty dang on. Cool. Something else I ran across was I kept... Um, hearing about uh, oh Buford taking payoffs and all this and that and of course I've talked to uh, some of those uh, club owners down there uh, you know most of them have passed away now yeah. of course, uh, oh, Louise, yeah. uh, Jack went first and then Louise of course uh, yeah. Toehead he got uh, killed in 69 uh, but uh, uh, of course uh, W.O. Hathcock died here a couple of weeks ago yeah. But at any rate, uh, you know, I've had uh, several people, uh, Paul Moore, uh, Skeet Atkins, uh, Paul David English, just different people, tell me the back yeah. of the days that, uh, you know, they had to pay Buford to do some of the things that they were allowed to do. Yeah. And yeah. Do you know anything about that? No, I sure don't. Uh, talking about uh, Toe Head White, he was a pretty rough man himself. And Don Casey down here drove a truck to different parts of the country. And him and a buddy of his was up here in Alabama, straight up from the car up here, eating uh, supper, I believe it was supper, they were eating. And uh, he said, uh, uh, one guy that was with him, I forget what his name was, but he said, look out here, coming in the door. And it was Toehead White and Junior Smith's wife. Surely. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've talked to Shirley and, before. And uh, they come in and eat and said, uh, Shirley got up, went up, went up there and got on the phone, stayed on the phone for a good while, and they left. And when they left now, that night, they got down here where Junior lives, and uh, we got a call to uh, come to down there. And uh, I went by and picked up my brother, and we went down there, and Junior Smith was walking back and forth from the car, and handed my brother a rifle and said, I shot Buford, killed him. Shot Toehead? And, I mean Toehead, yeah. But I shot the way and killed him. And uh, what had happened, he had a, a nigger that worked for him that wrote a place up in Alabama. Uh, I forget what he called him, but he wasn't doing anything that Junior told him to do. And he was on top of the building. And when they pulled up there, he shot Toehead. And then you could tell the bullet come from the top of the building and hit the toe head in the, uh, right above the eye in the middle of his head. And it busted the headliner of the car. And I picked up a piece of his skull laying in the back, back in the floorboard back there. It's about two inches long and an inch and a half wide. And it didn't have a drop of blood on it or just a piece of cotton. And Toehead was sitting there with his left arm out the window with a pistol in his hand. And there ain't no way in hell he could have had a pistol in his head with a shot hit him like that. No, I wouldn't think so either. But, uh, uh, the black guy that you're referring to, was that uh, Blue Tick? Yeah, Blue Tick. Glenn That's Alexander. Him. Yeah. Yeah. That was him.
I'll make you. He's doing the thing Junior told him to do. That's what I understand. I understand he's in a wheelchair these days. I don't know. I haven't heard from him for a long time. Oh, uh, Junior Sheriff is still living. Yeah, I talked to Shirley here a while back. Now it's been a year, two years ago that I talked to Shirley last. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she was telling me how that they had uh, started going to church and found religion. And, yeah. uh, you know, they just preferred to forget all the old times. Well, uh, there's a neighbor of mine told, stopped here and told me one day that uh, Shirley and Junior had gone to church down there where he was going in town. Yeah. And said uh, she called a preacher back there and said, Preacher, I want to tell you something. She said, you're the best damn speaker I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I bet he was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like her. Yeah. No, I don't know. You know, uh, I guess uh, over the years, well, uh, without saying he did it, Buford tried to take credit for getting rid of Towhead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but Towhead moved up here on the, on the 72 highway just before he hit the state line. I mean, the county line. Yeah. Somebody shot up W.O.'s house. Do you know who that might have been? No, I never heard about that. Yeah, he had uh, one night about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I want to say it was in 69. No, nope, it was, uh, I've been told it was after that. It was uh, like 70 or 71. Yeah. Somebody came up there and uh, uh, shot about a half dozen rounds through uh, his house there on uh, uh, up on the north side of town. Yeah. And, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, W.R. Morris, I don't know if you remember him. He was the guy that wrote 12th of August. You know, of course, uh, he alleges that Buford shot W.O.'s plane. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever meet W.O.? Yeah. What can yeah, you last time I ever seen him, I never did meet him that much. But I, I bought a watch, pocket watch, off of uh, some old ladies down there in, in the south end, black ladies. And uh, I think I gave them $45 for it. And I went up there to the pawn shop, just up the a little piece up there. And that old boy offered me $25 for it. And I said, well, I appreciate it, but I'll keep it. And uh, about two or three weeks after that, W.O. old pulled up out here. I heard you had a watch sale. I said, that's right. And I come in and got it, and he looked at it and said, would you take $125 for it? I said, yes, sir. And that's what he gave me. <laughs> Did you know uh, that by trade that he was a jeweler and a watchmaker? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I guess he knew what he was looking at. I think so. <laughs> How did he strike you? Did, you know, because in all of uh, those books that W.R. Morris wrote, man, he made W.O. sound horrible. Yeah, yeah. On uh, all Blue Tick, what made you, what really made you think that he was the one that shot Toehead? Junior. Uh, what, what made you think old Blue Tick did it? Oh, well, everybody that knows him knows that Junior was walking up and back and forth in front of the car, and Blue Tick was up on top of the building. It was just right for him to shoot that way. Yeah. And uh, Shirley got him three times. She jumped out of the car and started shooting him with a pistol. I didn't know she that. She jumped out. Yeah. Yeah. But Junior didn't shoot him. That nigger's the one shot him. Well, do you remember when uh, Buford got ambushed? And his wife got killed. Yeah. Did you ever hear anything? I've heard that he's the one that done that. 
Well, I think he was. Well, I've always heard that, but I never did know. You know, I've, I've, I've learned that, uh, that uh, they were separated. Pauline and Buford were supposed to be separated when that ambush happened. I heard that, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, I talked to uh, Petey Plunk's wife, yeah. uh, LaVon, uh, here a few months ago, and she was telling me that, man, she was just almost certain that Buford did that and said that he wouldn't allow Pauline and her to get together anymore. Yeah. And she had taken uh, Pauline home that night, and uh, uh, I guess she was uh, outside the house when Buford got home. And uh, she was so scared she left. And so then the next morning she hears that Pauline's been killed in that ambush. And uh, she said she didn't believe it for a minute. Did you, were you ever in the back of the uh, Shamrock there where they had the little club? No. No? No. Hmm. Do you, do you remember uh, much talk about gambling going on up there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what kind of gambling did they have? Well, I, I really never did hear that much about it. I never did hear all that much about it. Okay. I think Jack kind of cut it down some when my brother was, uh, he cut it quite a bit. Well, can, he it. can you hold on a second? I'll be right back. And with that beep, I put Hobart on hold for a call. And when I came back, we'd been disconnected, never to speak again. It was interesting to speak with him, but there's a lot more I wish I'd ask, just like I wish I'd asked so many other people that I've spoken with over the years about their experiences with Buford, Pauline, and all these other people. Like I say, I hope you take this with a grain of salt. Again, there's no way for me to verify this information, but I thought you might find it interesting. So there you have it. So until next Thursday, just remember, the truth has no agenda.